Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to install PySCF on Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution. What is PySCF, you might ask? PySCF is a Python quantum chemistry package using which you can perform calculations like hardy fog, DFT, or even wave function theory calculations like couple cluster, Muller placet, and um, yeah, and um, like a lot more. I cannot even uh, list uh, all of the functionali functionalities it has. And another thing you might want to know is that it uses Gaussian basis functions. And um, what else? Um, I, I think that is uh, all that you might need to know. And a very good thing about PyCF is that since it is based on Python, it is very easy to uh, you know uh, implement in your own codes or just use it to perform calculations and uh, whatever you want. It's very easy to learn, very easy to use, very easy to. Uh, modify since the um, package is also open source which is another great advantage with BioCF and also the uh, license of the package is very user friendly so even if for example you might want to make some dramatic changes to some particular module for example let's say you want to make some dramatic changes to the DFT module then you can do so and even sell the software in principle assuming that you um, what you have done is ethical and um, yeah, so the open source license is Apache version 2 and um, yeah, so that is it. I guess that is enough um, of what you need to know about Python. Now, how to install it on Ubuntu is question. So um, for the sake of this tutorial, let me clarify that um, I have pretty much the latest version of the Ubuntu install right here on my PC and also this um, this is a very freshly installed copy of Ubuntu as you can see. Even my software data is telling me that okay, there are some updates that have been released since um, the uh, this particular version of Ubuntu was released. But yeah, so this is just a very fresh copy of the Ubuntu version 20.04.2.0 and I don't remember um, it might or might not be the LTS version. But anyhow, yeah, so we will begin with the tutorial now. So how to install it, it is the question. Now the good thing about using Ubuntu or Linux distribution or like modern Linux distributions is that you already get Python pre-installed. So you don't need to install Python, but you still need to install pip, which is a Python package manager using which you can install PyCF. And uh, more details on how to install uh, PyCF are found on this link, which I'll put in the description down below. So in this link, you will find about uh, some ways uh, to install PyCF. And um, here we'll be using, of course, pip because it is very easy and convenient uh, if you are on Ubuntu. So I'll just go ahead and pop open the terminal. Now, since if um, you are on a very modern um, version of Ubuntu, then you should have Python pre-installed. So, for example, if you give the command which Python, then it may not give anything. But you, that means that you don't have Python 2 installed, but maybe you have Python 3 installed. So, if you give the command which Python 3, then you get this particular address. This means that it has Python 3 pre-installed. And also you can then just go ahead and give the command python3 by itself and uh, it will launch the python shell and you can see the version of the python that you have over here. So for now we will just go ahead and exit it by giving the command exit and then parenthesis. Okay, so that means um, we have one thing already done that is we have python. The next thing we need to require is the pip. So just go ahead and maybe check because unlike me you might have an older ubuntu installation you might already have pip installed so just go ahead and check if you have pip or pip3 pip corresponds to python 2 and pip3 corresponds to python 3 so i don't have pip but maybe i have pip3 no i don't have that as well so the way to install pip3 is pretty easy even in my previous tutorials i've shown that so you just give the command sudo apt get install and then you say python3 hyphen pip and then hit enter and then your password because i'm using sudo so you'll require the admin password and uh, the good thing is that it has found the package and it's asking me if i want to continue and then i hit y and press enter because of course i want to install it and then just wait for the installation to complete it might take a few moments Okay, so the installation of pip is now finally complete and we can verify that the installation worked or not by giving the command which pip3 and if you get some location that of course it means that it has detected the pip installation. So now uh, coming back to the installation procedure from the official PyCF uh, 
a user manual, we, it says that we just need to give it the command pip install by ICF. However, in our case, uh, we are using Python 3 yeah? and I also recommend that you always use Python 3 these days because Python 2 is slowly getting deprecated and um, uh, will become or probably has already become obsolete and it won't be supported in the future. So pip uh, will translate to pip3 in our case. So we'll give the command pip3 install by ICF and then see if uh, it, it is able to find this by ICF package. And also, um, just to give you some, okay, so the good news is it found the package here. So it says collecting PyCF and now it's downloading it. Now, uh, in the meanwhile that it downloads the package, I want to show you guys that what is pip actually. So pip is just uh, a Python um, package manager. So it has its own website. It's called pypy.org. And over here, if you um, come to this website and then if you search for PyCF, then you can also see which versions of PyCF are available here for download. So here I'm on pip um, um, homepage and then I just search for PyCF and here I see, okay, so we have the 1.7.6 point post one as the latest release uh, version and in our terminal, also we can see that we are downloading that exact version as well. And coming to the GitHub page of the PyCF, since it is open source, all the source code is available at this URL on their GitHub page. And um, so here also we can see that the re latest release version is 1.7.6 and we are downloading exactly that. So um, the, um, the, um, the developers are very uh, responsible and as soon as they make some release changes in their GitHub code, they transport those or like transfer those changes to um, pypy.org as well so that users using pip, pip for installation can also benefit from the latest um, release versions. So as you can also see over here that it has already downloaded PySafe but it's now downloading some of the prerequisites or let's say dependencies. So here it is also downloading NumPy, SciPy, H5Py and then now it's trying to install those packages and here we have some warnings but I don't think uh, there should be anything we need to worry about right now. Um, the scripts uh, Okay, yeah. So let's just wait for the download to complete and uh, or rather the installation to complete. Okay, so we have the um, all the packages that we wanted already installed and now is the time of, uh, now is the moment of truth. So now we just go ahead and check whether our PySafe installation will done out. So we go ahead and launch Python by giving the command Python 3 and then we give the command import PySafe and fingers crossed um, and did it work? Did it not work? What is the message here? It says that, okay, so I guess it worked because we are not getting an error, but rather we are just getting a um, getting warning. And also another way to just confirm everything for sure is to run some quantum chemistry calculation, of course. So let me just, uh, instead of running quantum chemistry calculation on this Python shell over here, let me go ahead and exit that and give you a brief overview of this Python GitHub um, module or package or the page, how they have structured it. So here in the examples, so here I have um, uh, the examples and um, since PyCF contains lots of modules, so here you can see that it has a lot of modules. It has DFT module, density fitting module, DFTD3, DMRG density matrix, a renormalization group, and geometry optimization, gradient, GTO stands for Gaussian type orbitals, GW green, and too much, yeah, so to uh, name. And also, I forgot to mention, that is very important, I forgot to mention it in the beginning, it is also useful for, not only for quantum chemists, but also for material, computational material scientists, because it also supports periodic EFT. So PBC is the module that uh, is relevant for periodic DFT. Anywho, so now we want to run an example and confirm whether the PyCF works or not. And to save time, I will just run a very quick uh, hardware for calculation. So we can find those examples in this SCF uh, directory. So here is an example, simple hf.py. And what it does is, um, so actually there are two in this uh, simple program or rather example, they, what, what they do is they create a mall object. So they create a molecule object and they define the atoms like hydrogen at origin and fluorine at 1.1 angstrom distance from the hydrogen atom and then define the basis set 
and if you are familiar with any quantum chemistry package especially those relying on Gaussian based assumptions then you know what CCPVD means if not then actually this tutorial cannot cover that I'll probably make another tutorial or on it or you can refer to some other tutorials and then they have turn symmetry on which is also just a way to make the computations faster by recognizing the symmetries you may or may not use that and then they create a Hartree Fock object by encoding mol dot or rather uh, creating a mol dot hf object and then they, the run command is synonymous with kernel in their code so whenever you give like Hartree Fock object dot kernel that means you're running Hartree Fock calculation if you have a DFT object and then you give DFT dot kernel that means you're running um, DFT calculation and so on so kernel is no logos to run command in the code however here they have given two ways to run the program I prefer the second one so I'll just go ahead and copy this part of the program con hit control C open my favorite editor of choice that is VS code with the Python extensions pre-installed and then just go ahead and press control plus V to paste the program and here I have my program and then just I'll just go ahead and hit control plus s to save the program and I'll save it by the name hf.py in my admin or rather the home directory and then hit save and since um, I have the python extension for vs code pre-installed I have the code very um, uh, um, I have the code um, with all the syntax highlighted so let's just go ahead and launch the terminal once again and hit ls and see if we have this file here in my home directory or not so good thing is that I have it hf.py and now let's go and run it and by giving the command python3 space the name of the file that is hf.py and let's see what did we get so we got a warning that we have been getting even before uh, uh, as I showed you before that when we try to import we get some warning re regarding the h5py which is annoying but you can avoid it it's not a big deal it's just a deprecation warning that they are using some function which is uh, obsolete or deprecated now but yeah it's okay but the good thing is that the program run, ran so we have the converge SCF energy from um, Hardy for calculation using the CCPVDZ basis set for the hydrogen fluoride molecule so that means our installation was successful so that is it that is how you install PySCF using pip on Ubuntu and run a simple calculation from the examples and um, if you do it you can also run um, any of their uh, uh, many examples that they have for SCF and so on so that is it I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found something useful from it and in case you have any doubts or questions then don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below I'll answer them definitely and don't forget to hit the like button if you liked the video or dislike button if you disliked it and subscribe to the, to the channel thanks for watching have a great day